What's up, Bradford? How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. It's the new year. We're uh, it is. excited to jump into a new year of That's Awesome. That's, that's for sure. I'm ready. Um, I'm ready for the new year. I know. And uh, we have one of, um, well, he's not one of Bradford's rivals, but he's one of Spinelli's old rivals. <laughs> it, were you guys um, rivals? But I don't think anybody remembers that anymore because uh, he he's kind of taken over a new um, a new place in the hearts of GH fans. And um, it's somewhere between um, their heart and their pelvis. I think Uh-oh. that watch like, out somewhere. Watch out. That's the that's the part that watch he got. Like he 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 makes people feel warm. He's he's definitely magic. That's for sure. What? Yes, magic. we uh, we got magic. magic Milo, Drew Cheatwood. Hey, buddy. Drew, what's up, dude? Hey, guys. What a warm in. Wow. There, there's a lot of. A lot going on with me there. That was well. It's funny because Drew, I I I obviously have known you for a long, long time, but I don't really like Magic Milo. Just came at the end, kind of the the end of your, uh, I don't want to say GH time, but you started out as as you and you and Dirk were just you know our our awesome bodyguards who would kick some ass for us. So yeah. it, it wasn't until later where the suit came off and we were like, holy crap. What has this guy been doing? Well, he's we shredded, all knew he's we jacked. What we all knew what was underneath. Here? We knew we, what was underneath. Well, the world we, we knew, but America did not. So America. Right. So, how how are you? First and foremost, man. How how's life? Good, how's life? good, very uh, doing well. I um uh, that revving that, up your Harley there. We yeah, yeah up your Harley. My, uh, my father-in-law just took my Harley. <laughs> uh, I'm doing well in uh, Florida for uh, about a week now. Uh, life is good for those that don't know. Uh, I moved back to Michigan uh, five years ago. So um, while the- uh, Five yes, years ago. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, five years back in November, which has gone like, you know, they say, I'm sure you guys can think about five years ago and how, how fast an event has gone. You're like, I feel like that was yesterday. And it really right. feels like that, uh, yeah, it was. But it's been five years in November. Wow. And, you know, I've gotten out to see you guys and work on the show, uh, I think five times uh, since I've been uh, back here. But yeah, well, it's been a- one, one, once every nurse's ball, right? That's pretty much well, it. <laughs> so, well, I don't think they've done that the past, you know, three or four years. They, they kind of, um, you know, might have done that. We did four years in a row, which I think, you know, you started the, the very first one, B-Rad, from what I recall. Yeah, that uh, maybe that's why it didn't last too long. Okay, hold on. Let's- I'm, kind, I'm kind of known for not lasting too long. Um, well, that's true. So let's not get into that. But let's talk about let's. Drew, when did you first start on the show? Uh, let's see, film my first. Well, I was playing an extra, playing a uh, O'Sullivan, uh, cop, uh, in two thousand. I remember that Sully. I was uh, Sully. Yeah, o- O'Sullivan. I remember the name tag being like, this feels right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how it all really started, though, I, I was very, you know, I just was uh, new in L.A. And, uh, you know, with Steve, for those that don't know, I, I, I grew up knowing Steve uh, as an older brother figure. Um, so Dirk, my brother, Max, would bring Steve back when I was in the like, seventh, eighth, ninth grade. They would travel back. I don't know what you guys were doing, just road tripping. Yeah, we were just... What? Cheaper, yeah. cheaper, cheaper beer in Ohio. You're from Ohio, right? Yeah, it's from five cent beer nights. Yeah. Yeah. That's Bowling cool. Green, Ohio. Dirk and I would hit the road together. I'd go do an appearance. I remember we were in Tennessee. We went to Tennessee to do an appearance. And then yep. we, and then I had a couple of days off. He's like, Hey, let's, we started driving somewhere. Like we started driving to Florida or something. And he's like, why don't we just go to Ohio? I'm like, all right, turn around. Yep. And then we just roll out to Ohio for three days. We'd come in like a freaking, tornado and and drew's like what the hell's going on and we play basketball and do a bunch of crazy stuff and you know but it was uh it was always a blast going back to see your mom and dad too so yeah so steve and i um you know besides me schooling him in basketball which i still to this day which is not even close to the truth but go ahead but i like to own it um they would come back and i got to you know know steve as kind of an older brother uh figure so i I had a connection to the show when I moved out there through, you know, my brother and then my cousin, uh, Tyler, Nicholas. Tyler Christopher. Tyler, Tyler Christopher, Christopher is your cousin. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So Tyler was on then. Steve was on. So Dirk would just take me up to set when I visited out there as a kid. And then I uh, just got to know everybody. Kind of, you know, just know uh, 
who's who. I didn't really know who's who. I just knew that it was um, super cool. To, I was very interested in acting. I, I liked the whole performance. And at that time, it was sports for me. Uh, but I always liked performing. I thought, how cool, you know, these guys get to like, man, it just seems like a um, super cool. I even thought art then. There was a magic about it that I just really recognized at a very early age. And so. Well, and Dirk was already working or. Uh, he was, well, he wasn't on GH. He, he came right. on it in uh, 2002, but he was doing a ton of, you know, uh, episodics. And um, right. you know, anytime I was out, he usually, I think he had filmed a commercial and I was able to be like, able to witness that. And so. It was just super cool. I just felt like, oh, yeah, you got to come out and hang out with us all the time. And we had our crew and it was just always fun. Like yeah. it was always fun. So for a teenager, cause I got to do that stuff when, when my dad, you know, in Beverly Hills, when he, he had a bunch of younger people around and it was just always fun hanging out. It was just always kind of like a fun party. You weren't partying, but it was a fun party, but for you to come out, because you always hung out. Your mom came out with you most. You know, yep. Bev Cheatwood's the legend. We love Bev. <laughs> so she's the best. So, um, but you coming out and hanging out and then going on set, it had to be so cool as a as a young as a young guy, right? Transformative. I mean, it really shaped what I wanted to do uh, ultimately after sports. I thought sports was, you know, going to last a little bit longer in college. And then once that was, uh, you know, Kwai Bosch, I was like, you know what, I'm going to just go out and hang with my brother and, and what a connection I have to all the people out there, all the great, you know, my family, I got great friends. I, I know I'll have great friends through my brother. So I was like, what the heck, let's go out. And it was pilot season in 2003. We moved uh, out in February and we got fast tracked to just kind of going up on set. Then I started training some guys. I started Greg Vaughn, you know, yep. uh, lucky. Yep. I training my cousin. So I'd go up, you know, when the guys couldn't make it, you know, for the, the maybe crazy day on set, I would go up on set and train them. And so on top of, you know, being on set just to hang out, I would be up there working uh, as well. Sure. Training guys. So I, I kind of got to know people pretty well. And uh, I think people saw the dynamic between Dirk and I and just how, you know, he is 10 years my senior, but um, just the dynamic, you know, we had and just on a real brother level, you know, just our humor and, and how, I don't know. Some someone saw one day. Basically, they said uh, what it was, and I'll just I'll tell you. Um, I was working O'Sullivan, right? I was Sully. And <laughs> they named. They said, "Hey, Drew, you got to join the union. You got to pay this money, otherwise, you you can't work on the show anymore." I was like, "Oh gosh!" I was like, "How much like, that? Like 100 bucks?" They're like, "No, it's it's about a thousand. I think it was like fourteen hundred bucks or something." Right. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh goodness!" I was like, "I, I can't work." Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh golly! I think I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could work as an extra. And it just it was a lot of work to put in to ultimately pay for that. But I was like, ah. yeah, basically, I couldn't do it anymore. So sure, I, I I wouldn't do extra work only for the reason that I couldn't support like what it was I a loss. To, and yeah, I was losing, you know, I knew yeah. I had it join, but I was hoping I just, you know, get something else and it would pay for it. And I could just continue to work. But um, I was like, I, I just can't do it. And um, again, uh, kind of long story short, I was up on set training um, Greg and Tyler, actually the same session and put them through like this crazy workout in, in our dressing room, mind you. I don't, we didn't have right. the, the, yeah, the right. The, the, the Burton Memorial gym hadn't been built. That's no, right. no, no, no. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. So I brought a medicine ball up and I got these guys like doing monkey rolls literally. And I'm like throwing the ball at them. And they're like, it was just looking back. It was all I had access to. And I'm putting them through something. And uh, I remember like, I was like, I'm just dripping sweat. And I'm just like, oh gosh, that was a tough, you know, it was a tough workout for me. I, I went up to the fifth floor to see uh, our old friend, Nate Dog. Yeah. Nate Fissel up there and uh, just like, you know, hang out for a bit. And one of the, um, one of the writers at the time said, hey, I heard you, um, I heard you don't want to do the show anymore. You know, work for, you know, I, was, uh, I, saw the, I don't even, I'm not sure they knew that, like actually his name, but uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I very much want to, I, I love being a part of this. I just physically, I can't afford it right now to, to, to pay all that I have to. And, and she, she, I remember she kind of took it in and she went back to um, her office. Just, I, I was thinking that they would never even think of me in any regard ever again. Sure. Fast track to super soap weekend, uh, Greg Vaughn, I was his plus one going down to super soap weekend. <laughs> Dude, that's nice. a dream. That's a dream being Greg Vaughn's plus one. It was 
it was <laughs> a lot of fun. And uh, I, I would definitely take that uh, invite. Uh, Any Greg. day of the week. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, we became um, close, uh, Greg and I. And so he's like, hey, man, how do you feel about going to Super Soap? And I was like, I don't really know what it is. Sounds fun. He's like, dude, it's a free trip down to Disney. Fly to Florida, all expenses paid. I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, 20 years old. And that sounds amazing. So Amazing. We flew there, got off, and, like, just – I saw firsthand because you were there that year, Steve, I believe 2005. I want to say what, <laughs> what, what I remember is my first exposure to like the amount of like the following traction that General Hospital had was when we were in Hawaii, Steve, when you came over with my family, you and yeah, Derek. yeah, yeah. I remember you guys cruising on a moped and we, you know, on the uh, the little uh, cart that would take you around. And I remember like you took your shirt <laughs> off and kind of just did this thing in the back of the car with me, <laughs> Dirk and you, and like you did it as if like, I mean, it was like Gregory Peck, dude, like an old, like, I mean, the sun was glistening. I remember like these crowds, like recognized you. Yeah, so Steve, funny, Steve named his left and his right Peck, the left one is Gregory. Yes, Gregory that's right. <laughs> right. And I, and, well, I did have a lot of jewelry on then too, Drew. I might've been blinding people. <laughs> I don't, with Whatever. all my with all my silver, they might have been like, "Holy <laughs> crap! Oh, wait a minute, that's Jason." Maybe, <laughs> Maybe. You get, like you had gotten this attention. I remember just being like, it, "It." I didn't know what like at that age, like what it meant to be like a beetle, but like it was like beetle ask. And then I saw that in Hawaii, just to, like we had to take off on the moped because there was like hundreds. I feel like hundreds of people like chasing their cart, and I was well, like, "For a minute, scared. how fast does a moped go?" <laughs> That one, I mean, with us three Hollis's back there, I mean, <laughs> right. so, yeah. have you ever tried to? Have you ever tried to drive around two cheat woods, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you better have an F two fifty because it's not rolling anywhere. We probably went topped out at forty five, but we probably maxed out about eighteen. And if dad, and if, da if dad was with us, we're screwed, bro. Oh, dude, <laughs> you're faster. You're walking faster. It just goes back. It just drifts backwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, funny, uh, dude. I had seen that, you know, in Hawaii years before, and then we went to Super Soap, and um, I remember seeing, like, literally, again, Steve, this stands out. I remember, like, they opened up the gates, and, like, all the security was there, but just, like, this, the most people just lose, at Disney, right, just losing their mind over, like, Steve and all these, these celebrities, these major soap stars, like, coming at them. And I'm like, this is like, this feels like what it, like what you hear, like a beetle, like this feels like the Beatles right now. What I, what I could envision of it. It was crazy. Super soap was crazy. People well, got, people got stampeded and broke legs. Like, yep. I don't know that, if they handled that part the best because they would just open the park and you'd have to run to somebody's line just to get oh, a wristband, man. a limited right. wristband. Like people yeah. were stampeded, stampeded. I know it's not funny, but I'm like, wow, this is probably a better system well you like, really you really understood what like uh, what how a crowd mentality could affect people because yes people are excited to see us and but in you you add that crowd energy into it and that frenzy and and that the fact you might not be able to get in line sure like and get yeah. a wristband then it becomes this whole like don't get in way of me and my mom and my grandma and my daughter because i'll kill you it, right. it was like a thousand Black Fridays. Like, <laughs> yeah, was, right. It was yeah. like Black. That's funny. The energy yeah. of Black Friday times totally. a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Steve, you were the biggest big screen TV there was. <laughs> and it, well, again, it, funny that it was Steve once, once again. That's because Sonny and, didn't go. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, true. <laughs> then all bets are off. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was uh, so. My point. I, I got the super soap. And I saw all this and I was just like, this is crazy. Uh, I went back to the hotel room with Greg and I remember Dirk coming in. Uh, Dirk came to that super soap. He came in and he said, hey, he goes, um, I just got a call from, uh, it was Nate, I believe, one of the writers uh, up there. And he said, hey, uh, we're writing your brother in as your brother. Uh, he's going to play Milo. He's going to come on. And I was like, well, I was like, because I was into the studio like three days before. And I said, hey, I, I can't, like, I, I can't afford to work just because I don't, you know, I got to be like making money, not paying um, SAG or after at the time. Right. And uh, so I thought that was it like forever. And then they're like, no, they're writing you in as like, like a character with a name like that, that you're going to be your, your brother's brother or Dirk said, you're going to play my brother. I was like, this is, this is crazy. I was like, what well, is and, you, and, 
What am I doing? Yeah, it, well, and just for our audience's sake, you know, it, once you get bumped up to that level and you're a, uh, a principal character or a recurring character, the minimum, the union minimum is uh, significantly larger than what you would get on background. So then yeah. you, you, you might be able to pay your dues in one episode and, or one or, or two, two yeah, episodes couple, yeah. after a commission or whatever sure, sure. versus maybe five or six days of background. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that changed yeah. everything for me. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll be able to, I, I can, I can afford to be an actor now. Like it's just right. It, exactly. It, yeah. The situation it really helped me. And I was just like a true, yeah. Blessing just for them to be like, Oh, this guy, I mean, that could be, I don't know this day and age, or if that was a different, um, set of writers in there who knows maybe they never would have thought to to do that or, or, or approach sure. that idea well, yeah well i mean it, you know the there's less time spent on set now with people totally you know, so there is less of a community family feel just because of that right um, and certainly and certainly yeah. now with covid right nobody sees each other yeah now now it's a whole new ball game but back then when we when you know when bradford started and even before that, it was, uh, you know, it was just, it, we were just hanging out, having the greatest right. time ever. Like, it was just like a, a club. Like, we were just, it was like a country club. You go to work at a country club. You're like, hey, cool. What are we doing after? Oh, let's go do whatever. Right. It was amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say I was even a part of, you know, in 2005. I mean, I think it carried over for a long time when Bradford came on. I mean. Yeah, for sure. Me and, me and Bradford became, you know, fast friends. Um, Absolutely. I'll never forget the uh, one of his first days on set, and of course he was getting like, you, know, you probably still do, but I mean you were getting like monologues of crazy dialogue. Oh. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember my brother and I were we were working with you, and I was like, I knew you had a good personality. I knew you were a fun guy, and I was like, I was trying to me and my brother were trying to have fun with you, and of course we probably had like two lines that day, so we're, we're all good. We're just like. <laughs> And Brad, I remember you just like going through your stuff and you're like, you have your script and then you're just going through everything just dialed in. Right. And I'm like, why right. like really want to like mix it up. I know he's like, I think we were like mixed it up the day before and you're having a great time. Oh, you're like, Oh, he's just a jerk. Maybe, uh, well, no, I was just like, like what's going on. And then like literally that day I saw all your dialogue and all the stuff you were saying. Uh -huh. And I was just like, that's, that's, I remember being like, <laughs> <laughs> and like watching what you were saying, I was like, "Oh, that's why." Like, <laughs> that's why dude, like dude's focused, trying to get his stuff right. Because as we know, like if you got a ton of stuff and the way you know we move, oh yeah, if you get tripped yeah. up on your stuff and you know you got a ton of stuff, I mean, you're gonna be there. I mean, yeah, there's, yeah. there's no there's no, me there's no messing around for sure. No, no, no. And and that was uh, man, I, I I learned that day just you just really put a lot so much into it and you have to, I mean, especially with that, with that amount, you know, of, I, I, I approached it, I think one time where I had, I think uh, close to what you guys consistently kind of do. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lot. So I was just, that was one of my first impressions of uh, just, yeah, your work at the rad and just, um, it was cool. It was cool to see. Yeah. We, hey man, awesome. we had a, we had, we had a really fun time. Like uh, you know, once you know, once you came on and and you you and Dirk were doing stuff. They when, you know, when Scott Clifton was on the show as Dylan, yep. And we all kind of had an, yeah. Who had, who was your guys's kind of crew? What what like who was in your cert? Was it was it Julie Berman? Was right. it you're talking about like how what our characters were doing? Yeah, kind of like who were yeah. you? What was your orbit? Who who's yeah? So that? so we all were pining for Lulu. And ah, got they it. would, they, and I think I, it was like Bill Adell was, was kind of, I think maybe behind some of this. Every time we had kind of one of those, like these, the three stooges kind of scenes where we're bumbling over trying to <laughs> win the affection of Lulu. But that's kind of what happened. That was, yeah, that's kind of what happened. It was like these three dummies. And I, I, I specifically remember, remember a scene where they were like, we were all responding to her and, and it, the the direction was like, hey, Scott, you go this way. Bradford, you go th this way. Drew, you go this way. And it was like, do do do. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, I, of course, that was Bill Ludell. It had to. Be. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. I, for I'm, sure. I'm 100 sure that it was. For right. sure. And to this day, yeah, Scott Clifton still says some of his finest work. Is done. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh yeah, he, he he always laughs at that uh, time. But what really was there was yeah, a lot of friendships. I mean, I still you know I talked to Scott. Scott was I trained Scott for like. 
eight or nine years or something. Wow. Um, so he, you know, he was always a really good friend. Uh, Bradford, Julie Berman, um, Kristen, Kirsten. Kirsten, yeah. yeah. Kirsten, Kristen. I'll, I'll never, no matter if I know your name exactly, like Kristen and Kirsten always. Yeah, always, that, that's always going to mess you up. Always. So what what sticks out, you know, from a scene wise, like uh, not, not necessarily storyline wise, but were there a couple hard days that you had with a lot of dialogue that you were like, holy crap, how am I going to get through this? And did you get through it or did you study your ass off the night before or what, 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 what was it? What was the challenge, the most challenging part? Dude, funny enough, I think one of them, like, and it's, for me, it's been, you know, knock on what I think when you have so much stuff, you like, you can prepare, you prepare, you over prepare, you know, I like to think I over prepare on anything, but. Oh, shoot, dude. I, I just remembered when you came back, you I can't even big. Yeah, I, remember. I can't I thought, even I thought, believe I thought that, that's what I thought that's what you were getting to. No, but we got to get right to that. Forget every freaking thing else I just said. But who were you talking to when you had these scenes? These the the scenes that you should have been nominated for an Emmy. Who was that you were talking to? Maurice. Was it Maurice about yeah, when you said, "Yeah, you, you, the, huh?" The storyline with his uh with his dad, right? With and uh, you were talking about who in that scene? I, so Dirk and I, well, Max and Milo's mom. Had, uh, Dude, had, honestly, and you know, I already told you this and I went on social media and said it, and I've talked to everybody about it. It was absolutely riveting. Like I was in the makeup, I was in the makeup room and I was watching it. And then I had to go to wardrobe and I go, this is unfreaking. Like I'm in there. I'm, I'm talking the wardrobe. I go, this is unbelievable what I'm seeing here because I don't think anybody not that you ever got the chance before, but to do the kind of work you did in those scenes was absolutely phenomenal, especially because you haven't been really acting that you weren't acting consistently when you came on and did those scenes. Had and you to, already moved? You had already moved. I was, uh, that was three years removed from LA. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. honestly, it was, those were some of the best scenes that I've seen in general but just the fact that you were able to come in and do that on it on a day where it was just like hey i'm flying in for the couple days i'm gonna drop these scenes and go home and the scenes could have been fine just by you talking to maurice you know you guys know each other the relationships there you could have just been like hey these this is what happened to my mom and this and that i totally get it you know but the fact that you went that deep and did that it was amazing dude it was amazing to watch because I always see you, I always see you as a fourteen-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. So, just to just to be able to watch you do that type of work was, I, I, dude, I, it blew me away. Honestly, it well, blew me away. You. Really, yeah. I, I mean, I really appreciate. That's why do we do what what we do? I mean, I, I chose acting because I, I I really like performing and I like what do we we, we want to change people's. We want them to buy in whatever character we we're playing and buy in and, and maybe change them right like some of the most impactful movies i've seen in my day like impacted me that i i'm might have made a change in my life and, you know physical yeah. fit so it might have be you know to be a better husband you know what i mean so they've never the the writers it was odd um i want to say i saw you guys you and bradford immediately after that scene and i, I came down and you guys were like what the hell what, <laughs> what was that i was like i i mean I, I was there, man. I just like, I, I really, um, yeah. a lot of times too, you know, we do the best with the material that we're, we're given. I, I'd never been given, you know, I, I'd seen uh, Dirk on his uh, two deathbeds uh, on the show. Um, but, you know, it was just, you know, I, I had to you know get emotional for a little bit and, but that was it for me yeah. to there and like, you know, respect a, a story and an actual, you know, because I knew what they were doing with the, you know, every, everything going on with the Alzheimer's story and how big and how pivotal it was. I was like, I got to, you know, I remember I got the call like, Hey, you know, um, they asked uh, if I could come out for, you know, a show. And I was like, you know, typically to fly out, it, it doesn't make a, a ton of sense to like, Oh yeah. It costs money. Yeah. Yeah. So I usually like, you know, a couple shows would be good, but they said, Hey, we got one show, but you know, basically you gotta, you gotta read the dialogue, see what you're doing. I was like, dude, crazy. And they, I remember reading it and being like, oh my gosh. I was like, and I, I was like, I told you guys right after, I was like, did I get the right actor? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they got the right guy. I know. Um, 
I, I knew that I would bring everything I could to it. I just, I was like, who stepped outside the box and was like, hey, let's give, you know, Milo, what would, you know, come to be, I, you know, I think you've told me enough, like that's, that was Emmy uh, dialogue. That was Emmy, like with the storyline. and Sure, Mark, sure. And yes. Mac, and, yes. You know, for, for me to, I remember Maurice, we went through rehearsal and it just, it was so gripping to me what I was saying. It, like, there's nothing light about that. Like, yeah. My mom died from something that he's about, he's going through. It was like, it's a crippling uh, disease, and it's it's just it's so sad. And so yeah. I like oof, I get emotional now with it. Like, yeah. And I, I remember just like Maurice, we rehearsed it. And I couldn't rehearse it because we Mo and I, we didn't even go through it before that stage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. We, didn't, we didn't go through it at all. And normally with that amount of work, right? Like you kind of it's good to go through it. I don't know why, but Maurice didn't get a hold of me to do it. I didn't get, yeah, a hold he, of does, he doesn't, he doesn't honestly like to go like rehearse that much anymore. Yeah. Like he knows his stuff always, but sure. he's not, you know, he's not going to track you down, especially now right. at work, but he's not going to track you down and go, Hey dude, let's run this stuff 29 times. Like we did right. in the old days. Right. Right. But, right. Of course. So if I'm so you, glad he didn't. Yeah. Because I know that that's, I, yeah. That, we, yeah. Go ahead. When you when you have when you have those emotional things, some if sometimes if you if if, if you sit in that emotion yeah for for too long, you're not you you either come to you feel like you have to match what you did in your rehearsal right. or you're like you've already you've already discovered it and watching an actor discover that emotion for mm. that first time that freshness that rawness is yeah. so much more compelling than then trying to recreate it, right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's so true. I'm so glad we didn't. I remember I stayed with Nate Fissel the night before or, you know, when I was there on my trip. And I remember going through, I mean, I went over the, you know, every nook and cranny with, with that work and just sure. Yeah, that. for sure. Nate must have run it with me a hundred times, you know, yeah, and I remember, sure. uh, that night I just wanted to stay in and just, just keep going through. And he's like, Hey man, it's like, let's, I mean, we say we break out, get some dinner and like go see a movie. I think we saw um, a quiet place. Like it's just mm -hmm. a crazy movie, right? Like a super yeah. amazing film. And I remember going, we got like Mexican food and like, I remember just digressing, like, and just letting it kind of like soak into my soul. I felt like eating burritos sure. right that night. <laughs> and um, I woke up and I just felt like, um, I don't know. I, I woke up, I went to the gym, I trained Muay Thai. And I was like, I'm like, like I, sometimes you're just in touch with like the universe and something. Totally, like, totally. Sense. I was like, I wasn't worried about like I, I never had the the emotional connection you know you run it sometimes you hit that note you're like that's the note I hope I hit it and sure I was like you know what I, whatever's going to be I, I think the material speaks for itself if I'm just there with Maurice you know right I'm that's just, great I, dude go with it like that's gonna that's it and so when we did the first rehearsal right Maurice just sat there he, go, he started clapping his hands he goes you know holy effing like he just <laughs> that was beautiful like and for maurice to come to that level of like giving you the props you know like that's yeah. something special you know of yeah, course dude. yeah yeah that's oh, so i thought i thought they had for whatever reason i thought they were rehearsed like recording rehearsal like, i thought I, I thought i knew it was rehearsal but i felt like they they started rolling right I, mm. I, for whatever reason in my mind they had started rolling so i was like shit i hope they got that because that right. was you know because i couldn't I felt good about that I couldn't rehearse it with, I was like, without going, that yeah. again? right. Is that, 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 that broke. Me. And then yeah. they're like, all right, you know, Marie, Marisa, like he can, you know, focus me, centered me. He's like, basically just run that back. Um, but you know, stay with me, you know, stay wow. with me. Right. And, That's uh, amazing, dude. He wanted that to be, you know, we all wanted what they just saw in rehearsal to be recreated. right. <clears throat> and I was like, I, and real quick as an actor, you're like, well, like you were, you guys were saying, it's like, can you get, can you, that just happened. Can I just jump right back into that? Yeah, sure. And I remember, um, I couldn't have, so good job. <laughs> I got one, I got one, I got one in me, buddy. I thought I, that's all I, I, had. I couldn't give two like you did. That was, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Thank God. I mean, cause I, I, I felt such a connection to that. That's the so amazing. And everything. Yeah. But yeah. So when I did it again, it was just, 
Um, and I looked like a Met, like the, I remember seeing the previews and people were like, I feel like we're like, dude, is that Milo? Like he's unrecognizable. Yeah, what's like, wrong with this guy? <laughs> I mean, my, my hair, I think my hair was different at the time. I, I was crying for like, you know, nine minutes straight. And so like, I remember seeing like a still from like the <laughs> first preview and people were like, dude, when did they, when did they hire, you know, Sasquatch? What the hell is that? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, n- now that we've kissed your ass enough about that, that those scenes, let's talk about getting naked. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah, let's yeah, talk, yeah. No. <laughs> so when, when did the whole magic Milo thing come about? How were you approached? What, what was that? You know, cause I know you freaking like, look, dude, if I was built like you, I'd be walking around naked too. I think but, you are. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so, but magic Milo, when, what, how, how'd that go down? Like, um, tell me. Well, I think, you know, I, again, like people didn't, that was another side that people didn't really know a lot, a lot of years. I was just kind of getting slapped by Dirk, you know, and opening doors and, uh, assisting Sonny. But, um, I, I want to say, uh, Ron Car- Carlovati and, and Frank, they really, yeah, I think they were just exploring. Honestly, I think Instagram that someone had seen a picture and sent it to the writers and they're like, dude, why is this guy got a, sh- like a suit on like every single day? And it was like, right. like peak physical condition where I was like, yeah. you know, really, really hitting it. And like, just trying to get like zero, like negative percent body fat. Sure. And someone sent it to the writers and they're like, yeah, why don't we just, so this is a soap. I mean, let's have a little fun. Let's get this guy out of a dang suit. And yeah. Um, yeah. So I think they did uh, in 2012 or 13, it was Connie's uh, bachelor party, bachelorette party. And oh, uh, right. he was supposed to have a, a, a stripper come but the stripper bailed and they're like you know i'm i think i was pining after lulu still um still not you know this is amazing forward. and they're like maxi's like that's our guy like milo can you do me a solid and i'm like <laughs> uh-huh you know of course and sure. so, whatever you, know, you want that yeah exactly so i ended up having like rip away pants on i think that night <laughs> oh, dude, you, dude, you had them all the time that's not just on the show no, no, no. It's just that they're like, Drew, you got your normal pants. Yeah, just, 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 yeah, check, yeah check out these uh, Stetsons. I'm just going to rip off here. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's it. And then it just kind of like, I think, morphed into more of it. You know, I think it was a, a hit of like, yeah, what an odd, you've been watching this, this character for like nine years. And then all of a sudden he's, he's got a little bit of a personality and he takes his clothes off and uh, he's in shape. And sweet. You know, I think they ran with it and then nurse's ball and then magic. Right. Mike out. So you just piggyback, you know, it's like magic. magic Milo. Milo. Yeah. Oh, right. Magic Mike magic was out. Milo. Right. Not it's sure was... about magic Spinelli, but I love no, magic yeah. Milo. <laughs> well, wasn't, it, wasn't it magic Milo in the, in the, in his, in the wands? What was it? What, what was magic, the first magic Milo in the wands? Yeah. That was my, that was my Oh first. really? In the wands? magic Milo in the magic wands or something like were that. You, were was... you a magic wand? Spinelli was, I, I, I mean, I was, Spinelli yeah. is, he's a wand. Yeah. He can, and he can always do it again. <laughs> oh, dude. He's so, ready. but no, so I for, I had forgotten that you would, that my, Magic Milo existed before the nurse's ball, but now I remember that now. Now, That's did you, started, yeah. yeah, did you get, did he get recruited for other private events before the nurse's ball, or was it just that one off and then it was a nurse's ball kind of tradition for a few years? Yeah, it was that kind of one off. Uh, and then Connie, Connie, she had that split personality. So she was like, um <laughs> after after the dance then she was into milo for a second oh like, yeah yeah like, um yeah and i think it literally then it piggybacked onto nurse's ball it's like yeah the guy's taking his clothes off let's do a strip that's awesome bag. right uh, yeah that's dude you know, i know i know there was a time we talked about taking it on the road <laughs> yeah i think i think so i mean it was i there what we talked about it briefly i'm like hey, i think we could take this on the road yeah. <laughs> ladies get the, like, get the singles yeah. ready we're going we're hitting the road i said to my wife i was like jenna i'm thinking about going on the road doing a uh, strip tea she's like hell no I was like, hey, <laughs> we're not we're not we're not doing All like right. but Done. Done. In, in that context it was like yeah you know right but, well that's the, that's the thing like if you if you're presenting it as a like it, if you're presenting it as something taken from the screen that you're recreating it, it it's not just like hey i'm going stripping for strangers right it's right there's a there's an actual reason for doing it and you yeah. can you know you know you're going to be like cabaret with, yeah was, i'm yeah. stripping for people who know me right exactly <laughs> they the may or might, may not give me right one, but i don't know we're going to try something 
<laughs> right, sure. But yeah, um, but it, but and, and that was a around, it was around that time that um, I think Kelly was doing like a uh, like a, a you know was redoing Dancing with the Stars, and so yeah. they right. were the two shows. Though you know we had a connection with that, and so Maxim Tchaikovsky came in. I, I, I may be saying his name wrong. Um, because Kelly's dance partner was his brother Val. And he a choreographer for you guys? He did, and we also had another choreographer. Um, and, and anyway, yeah. And so, but what what was fun for me, obviously, like we were kind of brothers in arms for that. Like we 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 were, you know, obviously, you know, Drew, you take your shirt off and you're fine. But the rest of us were like, because it was me, it was your brother, it was uh, Mark Samuel. Oh, no. um, Dirk, Chad, I know Dirk hated every minute of that. Chad Duel. Dirk hated it. Chad Duel was there. Yeah. Um, and I think TJ. Did you get a spray tan, Bradford? Oh, I did. I surely yeah. did. Oh, sweet. Good job. Bradford, funny to say, I remember you were uh, you were in the makeup chair that uh, morning. We're getting ready for the ball. And you're like, hey, Drew, <laughs> you go, dude. I stopped eating Domino's for the last week. I was like, you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were like you were like dude i didn't eat dominoes this whole last week i was like you good like, you were good <laughs> that's amazing uh, i love yeah. that yeah i'll pull i, I mean, gotta watch i gotta watch this i'll pull this thing up on youtube for some sure. of us some of us make sacrifices for our work i mean it just happens that's true you know yeah. you know that's true. everyone looks i mean like that's the thing it's like we all have this like image i mean look everyone looked great everyone looked just fine and my you know like i i take off my shirt like my wife recently was like you know thinks that i'm like i'm not super self-confident i think you know i build myself up because in high school i was i was torn down quite a bit sure like, I, I was i went through a weird stage steve you probably saw some of it but i gained like 60 pounds in a year and like it dynamically changed my whole like social absolutely hierarchy and like i just my even my best friends would like make fun of me like and so i i come up from a place of like not always being in shape i know what it's like to like be ridiculed and like so for me it's like i'm still to this day i, I i'm self-conscious of like myself my body like and i'm not like super conscious. i mean i think that's a lot of people though drew who work out and who are into fitness because i know it, it drastically changed my self-confidence and self-esteem when I started working out and sticking to a routine and seeing, realizing some gains and, and the people go, Oh man, you look great. And you're doing this and you feel good. You yeah. feel good about yourself, you know? And, yeah. uh, and I think that's a lot, a lot of people in fitness have that underlying something when, you know, they were younger or in not, not feeling secure, not feeling confident. And, you know, and quite frankly, a lot of body dysmorphia, Mm, you know, sure. And, and it's true and it's real. Like, yeah. I don't see, I don't see what other people see. Yep. I look in the mirror and I go, holy crap, this is what I need to work on. Yeah. I don't go, Hey, you look great. Look at that. Your chest is awesome today. I go, no, these are my problem parts. Okay. Let's get to work. Yep. Right. Sure. So yep. 100%. it's, it's kind of, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting dynamic. So, but, um, man, it's, it's, uh, it's so crazy to know you from a 14 year old kid whooping your ass in the driveway in your house in Ohio. 12, I think. Yeah, you were 12. 12. It might've been 12. 12 years 12 old. Years. And then how, how long, when was the last time you were on GH? Uh, would have been. So I came out once after the, um, the episode we're talking about with uh, Maurice, uh, 2019 Sam was doing her, uh, she was okay. undercover, the dog awesome. and stuff. So, 19 uh that was it and I feel like usually i get out maybe in the spring or something but the pandemic yeah, sure, dude, yeah. everything's back to everything up yeah man oh, so. Yeah. so but now you're 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 living you're living a, a real life in michigan and i freaking love it dude like i i love I, I saw you get your creativity out with your marketing videos for your new for your business and that's so i i mean i obviously that's probably awesome. haven't been doing much of that this year because you want to be safe but um like it sounds like you really built something really lovely. Well, here's the only problem with this. Uh oh. That it is, that he's a, a diehard Ohio State fan, and so am I. And he lives in hostile territory. Right. So that's Good really food. the only downfall to this whole thing. Everything else is great. Yeah. You know, pure Michigan, whatever the hell that means. I, I so, still don't know. Yeah. So still don't know. So as Ohio State fans growing up, live or die, 
it's not, you know, he, he's, you know, do you have a yeah. split household? No, I mean, Jenna's, you know, she was pretty neutral with that. You know, she converted to Ohio State. Uh -oh. So that, that's been easy. Um, her family, they're all Sicilian. They play soccer, you know, or football. So it's like. Yeah, so they really don't care. Deal. But it's like, oh, my buddies and uh, I mean, a ton of like some of my best friends now moving back here are huge avid like went to michigan have degrees from oh there. yeah yeah like oh die boy hard, die hard fans so yeah. that's, um, that's yeah, fun though it, yeah it, does, it well, makes it makes it fun that's for sure yeah, it, yeah. it's been yeah it's, it's been mostly fun i mean because at the root of it it's all it's a rivalry and there's a somewhat of a deep there's a respect right and that's what it comes down to but yeah sure. i mean i'm back here um it's been yeah like you said brad i mean i was i moved out to uh la as a teenager and i right. came back to like 30 three 34 years old and it was like i didn't know what a reset on my life it would be it was a i just kind of was like oh i'm i, I kind of feel like i want my family to be in the med you know midwest i feel like yeah. kind of a meat grinder out here i, I just felt like tired uh, sure. honestly. and so um i wanted to come back and i just i got like a uh, i was working at a supplement shop just yeah. a good friend of mine here a family were, were connected through cousins and he was like, "Hey, man, I got a gig for you here," Dude, and I was like, "You have a cut. You have a cousin in every industry. <laughs> That's true. In every single industry back That's here. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, brother, we appreciate you joining us today, man. This has been awesome, and I love you. I, it's great. I, I'm so happy people get to hear your perspective on just your whole journey at GH and especially those phenomenal scenes that you did. So, Thank you. hopefully, uh, we'll get to see more of Milo, magic or yeah, not, dude. magic hey, or not." We'll take we Milo have, uh, any way we can get him. We gotta have another like rivalry. Who could who could be our who could be our third? We gotta find somebody to we gotta because uh, Milo doesn't. I know your brother. You know your brother's married to Diane on the show. Dirk is married to Diane, right? Or uh, Max is Max, Max and Diane. Max. Max. Here's a little ditty about Max and Diane. Together. Um, yeah. Um, so I I Milo doesn't have some sort of on-screen, off-screen romance, right? No, I, well, it wasn't a pippany, but I guess you just, I, I heard a fan wrote me the other day that we broke up. So, <laughs> That's a off camera breakups are the worst, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I feel yeah. you. But so uh, yeah, I, I, spinelli I, off screen. I would have. <laughs> Stupid idiot. <laughs> He's so dumb. Uh, yeah. I, hey, nonetheless, it, you know, it, you guys are seriously like two, like really, really cool and um, awesome friends from my past that like it's just great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great to catch up, man. Yeah. So thank you.